I needed to hold some coupons in the vertical position so I could practice my tube to plate in the 5F. Didn't have a holder, so I made one with stuff I found in the shop. You can do it too. Stand by. All right, let's play the catch-up game. This is gonna be the base of my fixture. I have cleared off a spot in the middle with which we are going to weld to, marked it off so I can get my center line in there. And then we're actually gonna mount this like that. That's why I put the F on there for the F runt. I've got two bolts and uh, two holes in here with which we're going to weld our nuts. Then we'll just cut the end off of a carriage bolt and we're going to affixate a piece of rod like this on the end of that piece of threaded rod so that way we can tighten this up as we see fit in order to hold this in position. And then if I want to position it a different way, then I can utilize this piece over here on the side. We're just making this out of stuff that we have laying around, uh, scrap on hand. Uh, I've TIG welded the tube uh, onto the side. I've also TIG welded uh, this uh, vice grip uh, onto the tube. Uh, so let's get, uh, let's get this welded up. Actually, we need to wait and get this welded up because that'll make it much easier to weld this onto here. And then I can weld this onto here. That way, I don't have to weld it onto here and onto here while it's standing up. Um, it's just kind of part of project planning. You go through your mind how you're gonna put this thing together because life's already hard enough. It doesn't need to be made harder, especially by a choice that you're making. So here we are at the high-tech soak tank and you can see these are the bolts with which I'm going to make my, my handles out of. And uh, these have been in here for quite a while and I'm still getting some reaction off of them. So I think we're actually just gonna let it sit for a while. You can see it's not completely eaten off of some of those pieces. So I keep stirring it up and I keep flipping pieces over. So hopefully we can get that off of there because we do not want to be contaminating our lovely, lovely lung meats. Cut the head off that carriage bolt. Got one nut on the underside here and then pulled another nut down across the top. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tack weld this nut in place. Then we're gonna remove these two pieces and then we'll final weld it in there. Boy, I don't know what that stuff is, but it is nasty. Sharpened the tip of this filler rod, just trying to get, I could get in there a little better. Mm. Ooh, the inside of that nut got awful hot. Yay, I think we're okay. So I'll be honest with you, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let, 
I'm just gonna leave the rest of those that hardware in there probably overnight see if I can't get more of that stuff off of there that galvanized coating on there um, and see if maybe that'll get off get that schmutz off of there so it just won't be so gross you can see how it pops and kind of explodes so that's interesting because that's the first time welding that type of material welding this galvanized piece of material to just this regular pipe it's regular steel pipe so it's not it's not the prettiest thing it'll certainly hold but we'll see if we can't get our material a little bit cleaner see if we can't do a better job of it tomorrow all right here we are back the next day and uh, something that you'll learn fairly quickly about me is I'm never so smart that I can't learn something. So I went on to Yonder Interwebs last night <clears throat> and learned a little bit. Uh, we're talking about why we're taking the, that galvanized um, coating off of these. And uh, part of it's because zinc is a heavy metal. And when you're welding it, you're gonna atomize those particles. And if you get them into your lung meats, um, then you can, you can get sick and you can die. So the, I guess the question that I was trying to figure out is, uh, sometimes I go into the, the part store and I see something like this and it says that it's, says that it's zinc plated. And then sometimes you go in and you get the stuff that we've been working with uh, the past couple of days, which is uh, hot dipped galvanized. And that has a much rougher appearance, a much thicker, uh, coating and a much more uh, variable coating as to how much you're going to get as opposed to this uh, electroplating process that you get on these these shiny instruments same thing it's it's still a zinc it's still a corrosion resistant coating um, and it will still make you deathly ill um, if you get enough of it uh, into your body the parts that came out uh, of the soak overnight uh, seem to be um, a degree cleaner more than this one nut that we used yesterday. Now, does that mean we're still not gonna get all this kind of bubbly schmutz come out of here? I don't think so. I think it's still gonna weld pretty odd, um, but we're gonna, you know, we're just gonna plow through and, you know, we've done our due diligence. We'll make sure that we protect ourselves with a mask anyways. To a good start <clears throat> at least we didn't have as much of that garbage bubbling up out of there like we did yesterday now let's see once we get it heated up if it does the same thing oh much better much 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 better so yeah, we just had a bunch of goo on there from, from yesterday. I just don't know a way I can get this shot and get it welded at the same time. I need another cam. I need a cameraman is what I need. Now you may or may not have noticed I just switched hands and I stuck my electrode. If you could figure out how to be a switch hitter when it comes to rod, that is definitely a skill in your favor. Because the more versatile you can be, <clears throat> the more useful you are going to be to your employer. I mean, if I had the choice between a guy who could do one weld in one position and do it perfect every time, and have a guy who could do a whole ton of different types of welding and do it 80 or 90 percent. I'm taking the 80 or 90 percent guy every time. That's the stuff to do, man. Yep. Got that big blob of schmutz on the end of my electrode, so now it's difficult for my it's difficult for my arc to focus. 
that is not the sharp pointy electrode that I should be using. And so even though I had it jammed into the corner there, the heat wasn't wanting to go where I wanted it to go. It was doing its own thing, so we'll swap electrodes out. That's what I should be working with. Oh, much the gooder. Just having problems getting this big freaking rod in there. And I blobbed up my electrode again. Yeah, we'll try it. I'll try to get one more one more bead out of it. So now I'm going back over to my bad left hand. See if we can get this. Alright. She's done. She ain't pretty. She's done. So we can tell from the uh, from what we were doing yesterday we're doing we're welding the exact same we're welding the same joint it's a much better weld uh, there's none of that sp sputtering and popping and just yucky contamination so you know I'm not the smartest guy in the world but uh, I'd say if you're going to try to take that hot dip galvanized off of there, just soak it a day. You put it in there sometime during the day, let it go overnight. Uh, when, I, when I got the bucket this morning, there was, no, there was no bubbling going on. It was all bubbled out. Now on this one, I'm just going to see if I can get away with just an autogenous weld or a fusion weld, whatever you want to call it. It's fun welding out of position, isn't it? We can now weld this to the base, we'll do some couple of tack. Weld. And we're already pulling pretty good to that other side, so let's get this other side tacked up. So I'm having to angle my tungsten. Uh, into this lower base metal because that's a big, it's a much thicker piece. It takes a while to get the heat built up and that bottom piece to start puddling up before I can creep it up into the side without blowing it out. I said without blowing it out. Try it without blowing it out and sticking all at the same time. Well, that's great. Uh, everything was brushed. Everything was cleaned down with acetone. You know, I know you don't need to do that with with this stuff, but I'm just trying to get into the habit of doing that because that's standard operating procedure for the place I'm hoping to go. You fight like you train. That's how the saying goes. Now if I could keep if I could keep my freaking tungsten out of the puddle, I wouldn't have to be changing this thing so much. That's all part of being the new guy, right? Well the nice thing about this big thick wire because I can lay wire it. Can't do that with that 0.02 and that 0.03 stuff that I've been working with. It's really hard to uh, get that stuff to not evaporate. I'll take half a second and talk about this. This is my tungsten holder. 
I have a hook on my bench that tells me what the current electrode is I have in my torch. Uh, then everything on the left is a sharpened tungsten. I use five at a time because the packs that I buy, uh, I get five um, 16th inch electrodes and I get five 332nd electrodes. So I will sharpen these up and then as I stick them, because I do stick them, uh, then that one goes over here. And then when I'm out of sharpened tungstens and I've stuck all of them, then I take this tray, I walk over to my my grinding area, grind them down. It takes me two and a half minutes to grind um, five tungstens, put them back in the clean side, and then I put that just to the right of where my torch is so that when I do stick them, it's easy for me to retrieve a new tungsten uh, after dumping off the old tungsten and I don't lose all of the heat out of my out of my workpiece and it allows me to to work faster they're probably going to give you one tungsten at school depending on your instructor you might be able to sweet talk him into giving you a second one um, me personally I would find out where I can get some and and just have a box of them ready um, that's you know we're all big boys and girls here you can do whatever you want to do I'm just telling you I think that's an efficient way to get some to get a lot of stick time in where you're not wasting your time every time you stick one having to walk 65 steps to the grinder grind your single tungsten 65 steps back so if I gotta walk 65 steps I want to make it worth my while I'd rather sit there and grind five tungstens save me the uh, save some time I have to build some heat up back into the bottom plate. I've been set at 87 amps on this last side. I think we're going to goose her up a little bit. We'll go up to 100. Just because, again, this is thicker material on the bottom and I got to dump a bunch of heat into that bottom there. I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. Not wanting a wet end to that top plate for some reason right there. Let's see if I can bump my head against this 108 times before I get this done. And now that bottom plate's starting to heat up. So I'm gonna put my TIG finger on. Good. Hey, I like that. Don't stick your tungsten to your Sharpie. All right, will this do what we need it to do? I think so. Yeah. We're a little bit wobbly in the, uh, in the threads, but these are sized for when they have the coating on and we've taken the coating off. Let's try that. Hmm, there's a thought. We should, maybe should have put this on this side. Now it's not such a big deal because it's portable and I can just turn it like that. Then we can do our stuff there. But that's a thought. So if you're going to build one of these, you may want to take that, put it over on this other side. Then if we need to do something on the horizontal, we can do it like that. So the other thing, if you're doing uphill, if you need to do something vertical, you can do that as well there. All right, so that's not, you know, that's not too bad. So, it's all scrap. This is stuff I had laying around in the shop. 
because I went to learn how to weld. Now I can make my own fixtures. Anyways, if you found this uh, entertaining or useful or some combination of the two, um, give us a thumbs up, uh, share it. Um, if you got a better way or if you got any insight, uh, any type of constructive criticism, uh, I think we'd all like to hear because uh, you, know, you can always build a better mousetrap. So anyways, uh, I'm James, this is Rattle Can Fab Shop, making stuff so we can practice. You guys have a good one. Cheers. I hope you found this episode educational or entertaining or maybe even both. You might want to check this one out as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell to be notified when new videos drop, and if you've got comments, make sure you put them down beneath the sermon notes. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the Rattle Can Fab Shop. Y'all have a good one. Cheers.